Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. I've had an obsession with the mini disc format since my teen years. That was super popular here in Australia, in the UK, Europe and Japan, but in the US the mini disc never really took off. But now it's like a dead format. Well, it's not dead to me. Now, some of the things the later 8-track 3 players did better than MP3 players at the time was the audio quality was superior and you could switch out discs really easily. This meant you could have like 100 songs in your pocket and for the time that was pretty revolutionary stuff and like now it's not but you know that was the early 2000s. Anyway, the thing is the audio quality still holds up to this day and that's kind of the reason for this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload multiple times per week, so make sure you're subscribed. Also, we've got a Discord community, so come and have a chat with us. The link to that is also down below. Now, one of the later types of mini disc recorders and players were the Net MD style players, which basically worked like an MP3 player. Traditional mini disc players, well, you had to record the audio at like a one to one speed, so it was really, really time consuming. And when Net MD came around, it allowed you to plug your player into your computer and drag your favorite tunes from Napster and LimeWire straight onto the player. Now back then, I never owned a NetMD player because they were just way too expensive. But now that I'm grown up, they're a lot cheaper and I can finally play with one. Except for the fact that they don't work with Windows 10. Now, I've seen heaps of videos with people using hacked unsigned drivers and having to jump through hoops with Windows 10 to use them, but it just seemed like it was too complicated and way too time consuming for a regular person. So. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it the proper non-janky way and use your NetMD player with Windows 10 in 2018 or whenever you decide to watch this in the not too distant future. And we're gonna do this with virtualization. You'll thank me later. This guide should work with any hypervisor. For this video in particular, we're gonna be using VMware Workstation 14 Pro. The first thing we're gonna do is create a new virtual machine. Now click custom and do not click typical because we need to do a few other things. You can just skip this part and just click next a couple of times. Now you can do the automatic installer or you can do the manual way of doing it. Now the manual way is the way that I would suggest doing it. So click, I will install the operating system later and click next to continue. Click next, Nick. Right, now <laughs> select Windows XP. I think it's the default anyway. Click next a bunch of times. The CPU cores and stuff and the RAM doesn't matter. It's not too important. The networking's not that important. All of this stuff, you can basically just skip through it until you get to this part here. Now, you don't need much storage and I'm gonna talk about this why. Now, just make it about 20 gigs if you've got 20 gigs and click next to continue. And yeah, you're basically done at this point. Now click customize hardware because what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell the VM what ISO to boot instead of the predefined one before, which is actually the same file, but you'll see why we're doing this a different way. And yeah, just add that ISO and now click close and finish, obviously. Now we're ready to power on the virtual machine. Now this is the same as any other Windows XP install from back in the day. So just zoom through and install Windows XP like you would have done back in the day. There's nothing different for this part at all except for, yeah, except for nothing. And now you're greeted with the desktop. Right, so you're going to want to click install tools down the bottom and it should automatically start installing the tools. So your computer can interface with the guest operating system a lot easier. And yeah, just run through that installer, click next or whatever you need to do a bunch of times and it should install quite easily and adjust the resolution and reboot a couple times. And yeah, that's it. Now you're gonna need these three files. There is a Google Drive folder link in the description where you can download these. Now these were obtained legally and yeah, so what you wanna do is just copy them from your regular Windows install and you can paste them straight into the virtual machine. And you can find these files with a little bit of Google Foo anyway, so yeah. Now I'm gonna show you how you connect your Windows 10 music folder to your virtual machine. The first thing you wanna do is right click the virtual machine and click settings. Now you wanna click that options tab and then 
shared folders. Now, click always enabled and then add a folder. Now for this example, I'm just going to add my own Windows 10 music folder so you can see how this works when we get into the software a little bit later on. Now, one of the other things you want to click is map as a network drive in Windows Guests, and this just makes it easier for you to access at a later point in time. So yeah, make sure that box is ticked. Now, once you jump into my computer, you'll see a new network share and your music folder with all of the files that you have there for you without having to jump through hoops to get the files into your virtual machine. Now we're going to start installing these three files. The first one you want to install is the driver. It's very, very quick to install. You just double click it, click next, and it will install in a matter of seconds. Now the next thing you want to install is Sonic Stage. Now this one will take a little bit longer and actually require a system restart. Well, it's actually a virtual machine restart. And yeah, it should take maybe two or so minutes to install. I've sped it up here for your convenience so you don't have to sit around and wait for it to install. Now the last thing you want to do is install the security update which is the third file and that just adds a few extra little itty bitty features but nothing's too exciting and it's a super quick install as well. Now let's go ahead and open Sonic Stage. This is the program you'll use to convert your mp3 files into a track 3 essentially on the mini disc player. You can just skip all of this basically, just click next a bunch of times. I'm going to show you how to import your files the correct way. Just click next mate, come on, don't waste that. No, just, just look, we'll, we'll show you how to, come on mate, stop fussing about. Now click the file menu, click import and scan folder. Now you want to do is click settings and untick the C drive because it's going to it's going to hurt your feelings later, basically. And yeah, just click OK and it will start processing the folders. Now, what you want to do here is actually click no so you can keep the folders up to date on your Windows 10 installation. Now, what happens with this is actually it basically just synchronizes across both Windows 10 and your Windows XP virtual machine. Now it's time to get some music onto your NetMD player. Chuck in a disc. Just like that, oh yeah. Plug in the USB cable and plug the other end into your computer, obviously. And now we're going to put a, our very first song onto your NetMD player. Now, when you plug your NetMD player in, VMware will ask you what you want to do with it. Because I've already connected mine to the machine, it is connecting it automatically. And as you can see here, it's installing the NetMD hardware driver in Windows XP. Essentially what we're doing is passing through that USB connection to the virtual machine so we have no incompatibility issues with later versions of Windows. I'm just going to clear this disk because I got this disk from someone in the UK and it had a bunch of audiobooks on it. So yeah, I'm just deleting all the files off this so we can get our very own Gear Seekers theme on here. And yeah, you just click the actual file and the little right arrow and what it will do is convert the file to the correct format and then copy it to the player. It's very, very quick. And that's it. You've successfully copied your first file to your NetMD player in Windows 10. I guess, I guess we're going to have to test this now and see if it actually works. I forgot how much I really, really loved Minidisc until I made this video, and now I'm gonna use it as my main portable music player. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you didn't like about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek. Check out this baby right here. Isn't it beautiful? Ooh.